time of the Industrial Revolution, London has pumped its energy on arteries of steel. Of the many stations that surround London, we have chosen a few to show you of significant history. This portico is all that remains of the world's first trunk railway, the London to Birmingham. Opened in 1837, Euston Station has suffered from the constant rape of railway management. That leaves little to be admired apart from this functional edifice. South of the river, London was building its links on a vast span of arches into London Bridge that developed into an untidy spool of separate stations, which is still apparent today. We can still see the remains of its former glory in its arches. To compete with the river traffic on the Thames, into the Golden Mile came the London and Blackwell Railway Company terminating at what we can still see is the delightful frontage of Fenchurch Street. Liverpool Street, this interesting and spacious station was once a destination for Scandinavian and Dutch from the Harwich boats. Still to this day you can mingle with young backpackers on an adventure to the continent. Plans for a building as tall as Broad Street Station were refused by city officials which is why the present station's platforms are underground. Having suffered extensive damage during the war, the station has been splendidly rebuilt. The architects of Euston take note. Victoria is a tower of two stations that were very much rivals. This frontage of the South Eastern and Chatham Continental Line was the gateway to the continent its finest advertisement being the splendid Orient Express that still inspires romance. The more solid frontage of the London Brighton South Coast Railway will to this day take you on a romance in the air via Gatwick. <laughs> Built on the site of a former smallpox and fever hospital is the least pretentious artery from which once the flying Scotsman would link two countries together. It can be considered the most considerate of railway companies as it had the first railway hotel in the world. To come into King's Cross, the railway company came under the Regent Canal. During the First World War, it was practised to draw trains into the tunnel when enemy aircraft were overhead. By contrast, St Pancras, the rival to King's Cross, came over the canal and through the graveyard of St Pancras Church, tossing asunder the coffins of the dead. The residents were so upset that the railway company employed an overseer to look after the dignified removal of the deceased. This person was Thomas Hardy, who was to become the famous novelist. The remains now lie in this picturesque setting close to the flow of the ancient river fleet. By steam from Paddington, New York via Bristol, was a dream of Brunel. He must have been inspired by the Great Exhibition of 1851, using a new style. The whole edifice had a more spacious feel to it. There is also a notable architectural influence, inspired by colonial links with India, Queen Victoria made her first railway journey from this station. Hardly surprising that the Great Western was to be acclaimed the finest railway in the world. No longer would Brunel need his links with Bristol to New York as now he could go via the Heathrow Express from his station. Wishing to compete with other railway companies Sadly, the owners of Marylebone ran out of money. Although for its time it was one of the more modern stations, it now leaves us with a stylish and well-preserved friend. The ultimate dream of one of its founders, Sir Edward Watkins, was to link other companies with the proposed Channel Tunnel. 
Waterloo has finally achieved what Watkins dreamed of. The London Southampton Railway terminated its tracks at Nine Elms in 1838, but passengers wanted to be taken closer to the heart of London. This was to result in a termini with the grandiose façade, which is a monument to the thousands of soldiers and sailors going off to wars. Now, with its strange art sculptures, it carries on a tradition of going against the grain, as the roofs of the sheds are unconventional in cutting across the platforms. From this feisty continental station, futuristic trains now carry passengers to the continent without ever seeing the sea, fulfilling the dreams of the great railway builders. Thank you.